In this video, we're going to take a look at the 7.8 array as function arguments. When we want to send an array to the function, in the function call, we give the just array name. And then in function heading, we specify the array name and empty bracket. When we send an array like that, the array is passed by reference. It means that when we change or modify the contents of array, we can see the changed effects in their color after the curly function. The array name is the memory address to point to the first element of array. I'm going to make a code example to use array as a function argument. First, I will declare the initial array with 10 elements. After declaration, array occupies the 40 bytes memory space from the starting address. In this example, we assume that the starting address is the hexadecimal number 00E0. The last element of array is located at the address 1014. And then the array name is the pointer to the first element of an array. And now I'm going to make the function the print array. I will call the function with the array name. And then I will receive the array as a parameter name and one. At this time, the parameter n1 now becomes points to the first element of the array. So now we can use the same notation as an array with the parameter n1. Now I'm going to make another function. The name is print address. In this function, we're going to print the actual memory address of the array elements. I will use the different parameter name n2 but it also points to the first element of the array. And now we print the first address. If we use the array name directly without the index notation, it means that the address of the array. By these print statements, we can get the output result from starting address 00E0 and 00E4 and so on. The final element address is 1014. Now let's compile and run this program and we can get the actual memory address of this array. Now we have a lesson from this example. When we use the array name directly, we can get the actual memory address of the element in array. Next example is also print element in array, but I'm going to use different way to reference the element in array. We're going to make another function. The name is print array2. In this function, I'm going to use the different parameter name. The name is n3. And I will use the for loop to go through all elements in this array. At this time, I will use the different notation to reference the elements. I use the new symbol, the asterisk, in front of array name. This notation also gives us the contents of element denoted in that index position. This notation is coming from the concept of pointer variable. So I would like to discuss more details about this notation in the chapter 9. The one thing I hope you keep in mind in this example is that the array is also used as a pointer variable. Thus, we can use the same notation format as the pointer variable. Let's compile and run this program and check out the results. So we can see the same results even we use the pointer variable notation with the array name. Now let's make the code examples and then have some discussion with the array notation. The first discussion topic is that the what will be printed by the expression with the asterisk notation in front of array name and also what memory address will be accessed. In the second topic, let's make some changes for data type of array. For example, if we change the integer to the short data type, check out the memory address difference between the two elements. Now let's have a programming lab 7.8. I prepare a somewhat large size of a file from the social security website. 
So we can find the popular baby names by the state name or particular year from this official website. I extracted the sum of the names and then made over than 4,000 lines file. And this file can be downloaded from my GitHub site. In here, you will find a couple of interesting topics about the names. And this site is really useful to exercise to analyze the file contents. And here is my GitHub site. And just click the chapter 7 and then you will find the file, the baby name.txt. This file contains 4080 lines. And each line consists of five fields. The state name, gender, year, name, and counts which is used for that year. And now we're gonna read all lines from the file. And then each field in a line will be stored into the corresponding arrays. We declare five arrays for each field with the size 5000. And then we're going to make the function to print out all records from the array. And the last function we have to make in this lab is to find some records with the given condition. For example, to find the records that the state name is California and the name starting with the character A. Let's take a look closer the functions we should make in this lab. There are three functions for this programming lab. The first function is make name record to read all the lines from the file. The second function is to print out all contents of array once you constructed them from the file. And then the third function is to find certain records with the given condition. Here is the first function to read all lines from the file and then construct each array with each field read from the file. And here is the main code segment to read and make the arrays. Each field in a line is separated by the blank, thus we can read five fields at a time. After the loop, the variable cnt is used for the number of lines and also denote the rest index in each array. And the second function is to print out all records in, in an array. And we're going to use the value cnt that was made in previous function as a number of lines. And this is the last function to find some records with the given condition. In this function, we use the string member function rfind to check the first character start with the character a. And then we also check the state name is ca. If the given condition is satisfied, we will print out the records. And here is the link to download the main function and templates from the GitHub site. I hope you keep in mind the purpose of this programming lab. The purpose is to exercise the array as the function parameter. Now let's get started to make this programming lab.